At 33, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And for my treatment, I was entered into a clinical trial of a drug called Herceptin that in all likelihood is the reason that I'm standing up here today. When I started all of this, I knew nothing about cancer. And so I wanted to share some of the insights that I learned with you. Number one, I loved being bald. I had always secretly wanted to be bald and chemotherapy opened up a whole realm of fashion options for me. But of course, when you lose your head hair, you lose other important kinds of hair like eyelashes and nose hair that importantly keep your nose, your nostrils from sticking together. But what people really notice is the eyebrows. When those fall out, that's when people really know something is wrong. When I was first diagnosed, people came out of the woodwork to tell me about their personal experience with cancer. And I think we all need to be asking the question why so many people are affected by this disease. But we also need to learn how to deal with it a little bit better. So remember that when you hear the word cancer, there are so many types of curable cancer and so many survivors walking out there among us. Also remember that if you're genuinely trying to be supportive, it's actually really hard to say the wrong thing. But that said, I do have a couple of opinions about things that I heard repeatedly that I just didn't think were that helpful. One was, everything's gonna be all right. If you're talking to someone who's just been diagnosed with cancer, they already kind of have proof that sometimes everything is not all right. So don't try to predict the future, just be supportive. Second, even now I still hear, is everything okay? And so many years after my diagnosis, I just kind of want to be normal. And finally, one of the most surprising things was when people, when, when I told people about my diagnosis, they would, they would, I would end up consoling them. So sometimes people tell you because they just want to get it off their chest and then have you make them a cocktail. Um, when I started treatment, they told me I was getting a port, and uh, I thought <laughs> this was some sort of weird electrical plug, but in fact, it's this little gadget that lets them inject the chemotherapy straight into your bloodstream. Chemo consisted of one drug that was exactly the color of Hawaiian punch and that was so toxic that the nurses actually had to wear protective clothing when they prepared the injections. The one food that I consistently had an appetite for throughout treatment was SpaghettiOs. One of the worst memories of treatment was the taste I would get in my mouth when they injected antiseptic into the port before they started chemo. And finally, my surgeon, whose name was Robert Goulet. <laughs> so most people think that cancer is just not something you can joke about. And I know this because I've tried so many times to get people to laugh with me about my own diagnosis. Um, but in fact, humor was one of the great things that got me through this whole ordeal. Um, and, and one of the funniest things you can do with a new cancer patient is put something that tastes just a little bit funny into their food. For example, uh, when I got home from my very first chemo treatment, I drank a bottle of ginger ale, and it tasted just like tomato soup. And after several minutes of panicking and thinking this was just the beginning of not being able to taste anything normally for months, my husband tasted the same ginger ale and said, honey, it actually tastes like tomato soup. <laughs> so that was hilarious. Um, people came through for me throughout this in, a call, in all the different ways. One uh, friend dropped off a bag of candy corn in a People magazine on the porch. Um, when she heard of my diagnosis, another friend dropped off pies. Another friend said, I told you not to go swimming near the nuclear plant. When he heard of my diagnosis, another friend sent a Homestar Runner t-shirt. And a coworker said, I'll hold you in the light, which was a Quaker expression that I've never heard before. But throughout this, my most important person was Tom, who was my secretary and my gatekeeper and my researcher and my translator and my celebrity publicist and my number one champion. And together we went through about 120 appointments, chemo treatments, radiation treatments, surgeries, biopsies, mammograms, heart scans, and check-in appointments that still continue to this day, all to treat this very complicated disease that I couldn't even remember the name of eight years after my diagnosis, but that had a number of features that until the invention of Herceptin made it an extremely difficult cancer to treat. And I am very lucky to be here. Thank you.